Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Going to be looking at the uh, Sin City Gallery Edition, Artist Edition, Studio Edition, whatever uh, graffiti designs or Dark Horse uh, calls these things. We're looking at that. Yes. But first, uh, got to know, man, we have a Patreon, uh, and our biggest supporters are watching us stream this video at this very moment. They are getting our videos uh, before anybody else. They are mitigating the kayfabe effect and uh, getting first dibs on all the stuff that we're talking about. The videos are brought to you by the books that we make. This is the bibliography uh, to date. Uh, Red Room Crypto Killers Issue 1 is being solicited at your local comic shop right at this very moment. Put in those pre-orders right now. We're going to put that out monthly. Two existing Red Room trades out there in the wild. Three volumes of X-Men Grand Design. It's a 10-year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree. Four volumes of that. Jimmy has the forthcoming Hulk Grand Design Treasury Edition coming out at the end of Feb February. Plain Jane's is his shoujo manga. Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive is collecting all of his image comics, Street Angel comics, and he has uh, Street Angel Princess of Poverty that is going to be uh, forthcoming. You can put in pre-orders for that. But without further ado, man, let's crack, let's crack this bitch open, Jimmy. This was the most important book of my life. Not the artist edition, yeah. but the original Sin City, whenever it came out. Like, it, it. it was, I was such a, on a Miller kick, and he was gone. Yeah. You know, when I start reading Miller, he's away from comics. And so when he comes back to this, I'm trying to draw comics, I'm working in black and white, and here's my favorite artist back doing black and white comics. Like, it was just like synced up perfectly. Those end pages are hard to believe. Absolutely. That's three feet across right there <laughs> of Marv running across a rooftop doing his best Daredevil impression. Look, Very cool bonus here, seeing some pencil work reproduced. You uh, are getting a little bit of commentary from the various guys who were influenced uh, peers. Uncle Jeff Darrow dropping a little science. Yeah, it's a great collection of names. In, in Robert that. Rodriguez doing a little intro, intro piece. And it's a big-ass book, and we start off, and we're getting traditional size comics. This is probably 11 by 17. Miller's Back in the Game has a whole career drawing comics at this size, but he's got a full different approach posters you know like each of these pages that we've just seen that's the first thing that comes to mind is the poster image you can tell he's using a uh, tech pen rapidograph for that lettering we're on to the big boards look at how muddy those boards are like he you know he uses that ticonderoga pencil and he's one of those guys that just draws in those sweeping lines you know he draws standing up and you just see him kind of swooping around with those pencils you can see it in the art of sin city there's a lot of examples of that kind of penciling and where he is really going in there and you can almost imagine the pencils being held on its side yeah and just those those swooping gestures that you mentioned big video for us man go check that out and one of the big revelations is there's about five or six pieces where they show the entire process and he will draw the full figures all their eyes ears everything he'll go in on a piece of tracing paper over top and with a sharpie put all the drapery and perhaps the hair and stuff. And then it'll become maybe a light box situation where he is uh, in a process of reduction and addition. It's so great to see these again because I'm blown away by going from white to black. Um, I think Miller is maybe applying himself a little bit more here in this early, early Sin City stuff of really exploring work in black and white. Yeah. Uh, because I think you see him doing a lot of different stuff here that maybe falls away as we get further into the Sin City catalog. A lot of, lot of marks here, even in this very volume, like pay attention to these things because a lot of these textures and stuff, they go away. Like these, these little dots and mm -hmm. things, you, you, we're not going to see that, those kind of textures after this. And this kind of a page layout for me, super bold. Yeah. I was... <laughs> This is this is Image Comics era for me, sure. early 90s, whenever I'm getting hold of some of this stuff. And it was like, what is going on here? The control and the composition and the emphasis on an element or two, that is that was not something I was seeing anywhere else. Yeah, and uh, like most people, you know, an amateur would like, well, you got to center that up, right? Like, how can you go, that's too top heavy. But in terms of... One of the classic Sin City pages for me. These cops, man, coming up out of the darkness, out of the depths of hell, if you will. Coming up this staircase to come get Marv. Becoming a motif in, in Miller's work at this point, man, because there's that great staircase, several great staircases in Electra Lives Again. Absolutely. But here again, you see some stuff that we're not going to see mostly. That dry brush kind of like fading out of your shadows in the black. Still playing with these dots Don't also. see that very often. This feels like a Kirby page 
right here. But those hands don't hurt. The yeah. Kirby, uh, the Kirby feeling Close there. Close-ups. Mm -hmm. Big square hands. Diving into that abyss. You really do see him. I, I don't know why this never appeared to me, but how much he's going from like black background, white background. It's true. And check this out, man. So much drawing. You're getting um, the the uh, the molding mm -hmm. of the baseboards and the door frames. But, I think it's really not interesting that in there. what he ends up not inking. Yeah, like, you know, he's whiting out a little bit of uh, glass debris. And some of these things, we've seen these in earlier pages already, where the black almost approaches your abstract shapes. Yeah. It's it's pretty bold stuff, and it's pretty bold stuff to be happening in, you know, is this Sin City number two? Like, this is the second chapter of this stuff. Very experimental. I think in hindsight, that's not as obvious. But... Right. Using the good paper, man. Strathmore yeah. 500 Bristol. You, you see the stamp on there? That's what you get the nice big guy. Uh, that's why we have an addition this size. It harkens back to more of that clear line with uh, of the Electra Lives Again stuff when you see an image like this. I'll go further, man. Harkens back to some of the uh, European references we see in Ronan. Sure. You know, like clearly that's something he's been looking at at this point for a decade. So you, you create that stark black and white style. Now you got to get it to work with some real world things like the spider webbed broken glass of a windshield. How do you do that? You got it right the first time. How powerful are these images at this size? Absolutely. I'm being blown away by just like how strong something like even this car. I don't remember these images hitting me this way. Right. When you see a small piece, I wonder if this is like the additional shit that would be included in like that trade paperback. Very likely. This story's called Sin City, right? To you? It's not yeah, called yeah. The Hard Goodbye. Yeah, it's Sin City. I mean, I, I, one of the first things I ever got a comic book shop tasked with was get me a collection of Sin City because I had a couple of the Dark Horse Presents issues. Yeah. And the guy, I remember, like, he would go to conventions and come back and I'd call and be like, did you find one? <laughs> and eventually he did. So, like, look at what he's whiting out here, man. He had this sort of uh, valley that happens at the spinal cord when you've got a muscular back. And he was calling attention to that. But, nah, man, he's, he's whited that out and just created this white, white plane mm -hmm. on the back of uh, his shoulders there. The use of the bricks is just pattern. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, essentially it's a flat area, you know, that, that he's using and he uses it all throughout these Sin City books. It's really cool to see what he pulls out for that purpose of almost like that's a gray in a world that he's drawing in black and white. Yeah. I feel like this piece is inside of a circle on the cover. It's like there's a paste up and such a striking image. This is a full poster to me. Look at how you could tell he's doing underdrawing in a big way because mm -hmm. that is a crouched figure. He's got the entire body figured out and then is just inking the, the bits that he needs to. This is a three panel comic strip. It is. You know, even with, with Marv disappearing and the whistling preceding our policeman. We see here, we see the pencil lines for his perspective adding so much more detail to the buildings in pencil. Look, there's like, this is not the top of a building like this. Yeah, this it keeps going. It keeps going. And, you know, you could lose that, but he's got the individual bricks there. We have pillars or where the windows might lie there. And he's just, he's just pulling out the important shapes for himself. These are windows. I like the experimentation of this a lot. It does not work great for me. Did not this piece? Yeah. Oh man. I, I, th I think it's so cool. I think it's real interesting, but it, it's just weird for me to read a building where, like, this is universally lit, essentially. You know, windows are black. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, and I get it. Um, how about that shit, though? Yeah. Man? Does that work for you, Jim? That do you approve work. of this that, one, Jim? I do love that. <laughs> I, I love how distinct the light is. You know, like, he's above the light. The street lights are, are, you know, from below there. The hyperbole, too, man. He's getting his fingers in between the mortar of the bricks and his feet. <laughs> His toes in between the yeah, water of think, the bricks. I don't think Marv's uh, big big size 14 boots are climbing that this, too easily. This is hyperbole, and it's beautiful, man. We don't question it. No. You accept it. No doubt about it. And also, Miller's so good with composition where, like, we're at the top of the page. He has climbed up. This is a height. And it's represented not just graphically, but also literally the way the page is composed. He is at the top. He's done. A, he's done his and fair it's leaning, share, man. Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go with the with he the wind. Fall off of there very easily with the wind. That the lady who played her in the movie, man, they just fucking nailed it. She, like every pose, every composition. I've never seen the movie. Oh, I love it, and the other one, both of them. Yeah, I probably should watch it. 
I love this stuff. Like whenever he would get into the tiles, yeah, it's it's another version of that brick. But man, like to use it to define the space where it's going back in perspective, it was so like. I would lose my mind staring at these pages. It feels real accurate too. Like like he is like light box and something. And the fact that he's not using ruler, it really feels like the guy did a bad putty job. Like in that, it, it feels like a real. That's a that's a Pittsburgh bathroom right there. It's great stuff. Even carries it over into the reflection in the medicine cabinet. Randy, please have panel three moved to line up with one and two. Uh, I see. Push it over a little bit more. Wonder what he was thinking when he did that originally. Right, because there's a choice. You know, this is an uninked set of uh, lines. Uh, there was dialogue written there. He ended up lettering it there. Very interesting. Yeah, it's another one of those chapter breaks. You're right about. I'm pretty sure that's what that was. Yeah. What it was that, and in this case, two of them. And it would be promoted that way uh, whenever a new trade would come out. There's 16 extra pages, and usually they would be these big moments. There, yeah. it, would, it would never be paneled pages. I think sometimes that was to make your uh, page breaks and, yeah. and spreads and, and page reveals work right. Love this kind of stuff. There's no reason to have that airplane there, and yet it's such a cool detail to put in. Yeah, I know what you mean. But like, it's his childhood bedroom. Oh, it works perfectly. It's great. But I think if you were just... It'd be very easy to be like, he went to his childhood bedroom. Mm -hmm. And who knows? Maybe you draw a dresser with something on it or whatever. But that plane is such a vision... So pleasing visually. Yeah. See where he's got that nose from. Mm. <laughs> it looks like a Muppet. It, it's it's wild profile, <laughs> both of them. Even Marv with his uh, with his cartoony, probably the most cartoony piece of Marv that we see is that big grin on his face. If it was just a head and had feet, it would be an is. Yeah, it would be. Good stuff. That's an iconic piece. I think how I might be on the back cover. How covers. about our, our four being uh, blown up? Right, yes. Like so that little four so much you go in with some white media? Almost looks like tape you're putting down right this is another one of those brick patterns that just uh, it's so simple looking at it now you know with some time with with perspective but it absolutely i had never seen anything like this for sure absolutely the eisnerian pipes that would be you know the sort of jail bars of this like eisner would would do that uh, allowing... Almost religious, you know, almost crosses yeah. that he's going into this uh, boy somewhere, you know, somewhere to really face face what's going on. Allowing this negative space to be wetness, Love that. dampness, like coming down from the wall. So he's thinking about the environment, like what, like what is this? This is an alley. Your coat looks like Baghdad. Famous, <laughs> famous line. So is your face. <laughs> <laughs> Loved all of it. Boy, the shadows that he could put on those bricks. It feels like that's your groundwork for the film. Like sure. I can remember seeing all the video for it and, the, and like how they would show the tiles and the bricks and the shadows on them. Testing out that pen. Mm -hmm. Got to get that pen working. Big fan of that. Also playing with... Uh, go back one page because he starts playing with... Uh, you know, he plays with type and its arrangements so much throughout these throughout the Sin City run. And I feel like you're really seeing it in some of this kind of stuff where... It's it's getting into those into the prose where you're almost combining prose now and illustration and it, and even here you get some of that. The uh, you know how like those buildings didn't work for you. This hair this hair never worked for me. That's so interesting. Like I'm looking at this stuff and I'm like these are such bold choices. They they're a weird bit of storytelling. They're kind of those posters, and it just feels like this is you get an artist at this stage in their career where they can do what they want. They can sort of indulge themselves, and that's what I see in those pages. And there are choices, you know, the, the fringe on her costume, I think, is similar to the hair. Yeah. Maybe it works better in some places than others. I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting idea of, like, how do you solve this visual problem? Right. Like, that hair looks pretty cool. So now, man, he's, he's done with uh, putting all those bricks. We're just going to give you the shadow. Yeah, I like that. It's pretty exciting. It works. I mean, it's a reversal. You yeah. know, it's, it's, we walked in there with that nice bright alley. We're walking out another door, and guess what? We're in a different place. And, and it's visually represented. Choreographing this stuff, not too easy. But, he, but that's something that Frank Miller has always excelled at. Yeah, it, I, I, I mean, he's credit. 
I think of him as being credited with Daredevil as choreographing fights. Yeah. You know, really going from that Jack Kirby free for all to a more planned fight. And yeah, you see it here. Yeah. It's exactly this kind of stuff, except, you know, it's electro size or something. You see it here and you see it economic, like two panels for him to get, take one guy's gun, shoot the other guy with it. And he, he makes a conscious choice to like abuse that 180 degree rule. And it's a very jarring moment. And it works for it's the story really well flow. done there, especially because the one guy's getting spun around and face planted. Works really great when he knocks the guy's nose off. Going from the line art of the gun to the all shadow of the gun, just the shape. That stuff works really well. And just for me. catching that shadow plane of the bandages and things. It's a great muzzle burst. Yeah, because that's what's giving you the shadow on the gun on the face. It's almost lightning, you know, like something that you would see in Dark Knight Returns would be lightning, yeah. or in Jeff Smith's Bone with the lightning, you would see that kind of effect. And this is the stuff that the um, style biters would really mm -hmm. hinge on, is that like lack of holding line, light coming from a specific source kind of thing. So when we start getting these marks on faces... That's your this, death blow shit. It is, but it's also really abstract. Very much. That's, that's no longer built on a on a consistent light, you know, like that becomes some expressive piece of black and white mark making and miller's a guy i don't think of as drawing beautiful women but his when when he has to he's able to make a very alluring woman yeah absolutely and and i i love this uh approach with the hair with goldie's hair man uh giving you big shapes in the black and then accenting it with uh his his white media and you can see he's figuring it out himself man he has some shadow up here when some things happen he's like no i'll take all of that out but just put some shadow around the eyes. I love the choice. It's awesome to see that it didn't start this way. But yeah, man, make those eyes black. Make those eyes be the thing that pops. This is Alex Toth 101, man. You put the black dot in the middle of the white, that's your focal point. And you're doing it with her eyes, genius. See, this is what I'm talking about, where totally. this is just like some kind of abstract expression. And wouldn't this be a cover to... Uh... I think that's a... Dark yeah, Horse Presents? I think so. Although the five makes me wonder if that's true. I think that's a cover. Yeah. Tossing and turning. This is manga decompressed storytelling. You know, mm -hmm. like you have you just an action shot of emotion. Right. And the way he would offset it is with the text that he would put in. And, and he played with that a lot in Sin City, I think. Really effectively. Like there was some stuff, I think, with the text that I wasn't seeing elsewhere. That's a gross toilet. That's a that's a great. It's a reverse drawing. You know, we talk about lines that describe form, and now they're white lines that describe the, that bull shape. That is aggressive. Everything. So gory. First time I think we've seen that kind of blood splatter effect used at least that to that degree. Yeah, that's the Dwight eyeball blood splatter. Like the uh, offset shape. of like the dots. You know, our tie pattern. Mm. Kind of interesting to throw both of those into the same panel. This is uh, Frank Miller plays this guy in the movie, the priest. I never noticed this before, but feathering on our tire. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if there's any other feathering in this book. When you get to look at something at this level, you get, you get to see that. You know, some more of that spider web glass that just reduces down to little pellets. The cartooning of our of our preacher here with that kind of sunken brow, and you could sell it with, with the black, is a very, very solid approach. It's cartooning. Absolutely. And this gun, I have a feeling there's a lot of kayfabe going on on that gun. It, it looks way too... The proportions look off to me, and I love to see that. It's it's a comic like you're. It's the power of cartooning is yeah. to do that. You could trace that gun if you wanted it to be 100% accurate. Much more important that it fits that panel, in my opinion. The, Iconic. The bravado, I, dude. I stared at this. I redrew these pages. This was everything to me. Yeah, it's it's a real. You know, this is uh, this is John Workman, Walt Simonson, down to the the type. You know the 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 way he chose to draw the yeah. type. That's a very workman. -ish. Miller doesn't invent this, but it's one of the first times I saw it. And I mean, bravado, as you say, Ed. Very butch. huge, man. That that's really bringing it. It's really applying it to 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 maximum impact. Got some kind of like little K car or something. <laughs> he sees more more of this. Uh, draw a bunch of hair. Take a bunch of it out. More of your abstractness, man, like straight up fire. You know what? Fire. I love that. This is something that I didn't notice before either, and I really... It's it's fun. It was on that cop car earlier that I pointed out. It's a subtle little piece. Sells you some motion. Convey, conv conveys that movement, man. I, I guess, you know, this is old Benzo. Like, I guess they had key fobs back in those days, man, because, like, my Certainly parents didn't on. have key, key fobs 
to way later. No, me either. I love the clumsiness of the big hand, fingers and stuff too wrapped around that gun. The shape's still there. I can imagine him drawing that in pencil and taking it out, but it's such a simple uh, shape. There is a bleed at the end of these lines, like, I, but there's not at the end of the lettering. Like, this is definitely tech pen stuff, but I wonder if this is a different tool than different ink maybe a uh, pen nib dip pen maybe yeah but it would have to be the stiffest kind of pen because you're not getting that much line variation yeah i i used to always think that that line was part of the lettering line but, yeah uh maybe i'm wrong at this level it just doesn't look like it it's doing a lot of searching like this is a paste up or something yeah for this uh this piece he redrew some bits and uh, a lot of white media being used looked like he wanted to put the the tires here and thought better of that or put them there and then uh, decided to get rid of it exactly how about that for a page yeah so effective in print too and uh the level of confidence to do a page like that yes massive oh totally uh, because like you know you would still maybe even want to put more windows and things uh this is one of those images where yeah. the horizon line yep, is yep. is uh I'm glad you standing that it. out. We talk about that a lot, and you're right. That is a really good example of you, it. You never see it in uh, black in a silhouette. You know, for creators at home, I feel like this book is an argument to to do a black and white book, right? Because it certainly makes you think about this stuff. How about a little throwback to Ronan days? Really bringing out your lines and textures on all those trees. Drawing animals in this chapter. This reminds me of like television show writing, where like there's almost a theme. You know, and you're seeing all these different animals in this in this particular chapter. There's a theme of wolves for him. You know, that's it's in 300, and he has that like that Netflix show that revolves mm -hmm. around or involves like a wolf. Uncle Jeff showing up. <laughs> there he is. It really is Jeff Darrow too. I think that bone's a reference to 2001. Oh, good call. It feels so much like a like a still like the frame. Image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You could hear the Ric Flair music going over top of it. <laughs> or, or was it Randy Savage? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You're right. <laughs> what a blur. This. Yeah. Classic. This is another use of black and white that I don't think we've seen exactly, that white outline. Great stuff, man, to really sell his hand and the, the kind of the monstrousness of him. Yeah. Obvious reference, I think, to Charlie Brown in that sweater. Yeah. Sadistic Charlie Brown. And here's another example of this. Like, okay, we're going to write some. We're going to show our Mickey Spillane love here in this uh, in this margin. Got to go purple. And now our pages have taken a smaller size. Yeah. Could be economy. Could be a uh, bigger page count per chapter and shorter window time frame to get those turned in. What a morbid concept, right? We're our serial killer with heads mounted on the wall. Yeah, like deer. Pretty dark stuff there. Reintroduces our... our uh, psychotherapist ki uh, character and she's been destroyed at this yeah. point you know like you can see it hand cut off and fed to her look at how pleased kevin is at the screams he made me watch looks like his his forehead's been uh, scarred like he's been in the in the ring with that door he, he got gigged <laughs> got the gig look at that that's severe he, like he, he's really feeling it those striations like that's the thing like when we were at art school the teachers would like be ruthless in their criticisms if you're drawing like all the striations and stuff if a guy's just chilling it's like no that's flexing like you do that when you're flexing your muscles relax when you're not this is such a great panel composition too where they're on different planes yeah I, that's amazing it's it so extreme it's it works so great in the economy of a comic and see there are these bits where it does look like miller still figured some things that he's trying some stuff out uh, yeah, that one's pretty awkward. Yeah. with And I say that based on we've got a white outline, then we've got a black line, then we've got a white outline. Right. But that, there's that, cool that stuff. That looks like it doesn't fit as There's perfect. cool stuff, like like the outline of the hands like, around the bars and stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's almost like a Tom drawing right there. That's a, I, I love this whole page. I'm real impressed by the it. The POV shot, sick as hell. In the movie, they really capture like that lumbering, that weird mm -hmm. lo gait black on black that feels like uh something you got to figure out all right so here we go this was i bought this off of the rack the dark horse presents issue this is really probably one of the 10 most influential like burnt into my brain comics and it has one of the greatest one of my favorite pages ever 
And uh, I just love this, the perspective of the staircase as we go down the stairs into the basement. Yeah. And this kunk is it's going back and forth, back and forth, and her eyes are following it yeah. because each row is the same amount of time. Right. It's, I just love it, masterpiece. It's one of my favorite pages in comics. And once again, another very decompressed piece of storytelling. Look at how small the heads are. They're like He's ten heads. going with this different thing too with the lines. No longer are all the, li all the tiles outlined, which it's so claustrophobic. Like they are stuck in that space. It's true. It's true, and that's all line. There's no white media to like cut those in half. Uh, there is white media around the shadow to give you that, but uh, to make the situation even grosser, these drains like that's your bathroom. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna be in there a while. This is your bathroom. Yeah, it's it's a little surprising that you put your heads on that wall. <laughs> I feel like that's where you want to hang out, but I don't know what he's doing when he's looking at those heads. No, so maybe it, just, it makes sense. It ain't for him. It's just intimidation for your. Uh, this is where you're going to end up, sucker. That type of shit. There's your max striations, right? Yeah. Like we're getting through that door. And this is the stuff that like Jim Lee and and that brand of style biter. They were attracted to this, trying to do their own version. Never worked. It rarely works with him. Really, it's it's, it's something he yeah, tries and divorces. Effect. Uh, Ronnie Garvin with the bleach yeah. blonde uh, top. <laughs> like incinerators, I guess. A lot of duct work. It's such an interesting character, man. He feels like a wrestler. Yeah. Like, I feel like Hawker Animal might have tried that one time. Yeah, maybe a barbarian or warlord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvel trying to uh, make do whenever road warriors don't sign right away. I love this. He was, yeah, he was that's wild. looking to frame our guys with a bunch of foliage and then realizing we don't need we don't need that we don't need the the frame this was the other bonus of buying this particular issue of dark horse presents is it's a bigger than eight page section yeah. so you get the hatchet fight and i love that there's a hatchet fight sure cartoon fucking bullet holes man mm -hmm. cartoon bullet holes you got that wild right. still trying that gimmick Almost a different effect here, because now we're in night and darkness, presumably. You know, you see how shadowed up everybody is, for the most part, in this part. Because we are outdoors now, full moon zine. When you get the brick, mm -hmm. like, you just, it, it feels like you're just psh, just squeezing a little bit and, like, you know, 20 bullets. Brick. This is neat. This is, uh, your hatchet's down at his side, ready to go into action, and it's mirrored with the boot. It's almost, you're getting the motion you right. know, where you would create, copy that, make parallel lines. Just taking care of these dudes. Your flak jackets are not going to do much. Punt. One of those sound effects that describes the action. Really good stuff. Love this arm stretched out. Man, full blood. Like somebody's getting hurt bad whenever that arm comes down. Yes, sir. And you get a shadow behind it that makes the white pop. Because you can, again, you can see some muscles and stuff drawn, but just never inked. Yeah, and it is a convenient shadow that's being given to give you the contour of the tree and just taking a little chunk of tree out so you know beyond a shadow of a doubt like that that bullet it's it didn't hit our guy i'm so surprised by how gray the whited out part is because you know like you'd have to blow out levels if you were doing it digitally today scanning um but that white not covering very well it's true man and and you know they will and it will have texture and i remember these pages you will see like little chunks of black there just wasn't good white man they would tell you to use like that pro white stuff you would get this with that pro white it was never great a lot of guys use i guess uh white acrylic paint mm. i feel like that's one of your iconic images and another one of those weird yeah op art yeah it was so strange the, the those choices it's the equivalent to me of like a lot of the image guys like a McFarlane when you see like a close up of a face or a hand and it's just covered in marks and right. it's kind of like what are you drawing I don't understand all these marks that was sort of what some of this some of this kind of like fake uh, or fa facial stuff was for me you know I couldn't I couldn't copy this because I didn't understand it yeah yeah and he and he couldn't probably explain it either but this is still early in the game and then when he would have a moment like this where it's like now it's all light like there's no shadow to it it was very awkward but i think this was left up to linvarly to color i've seen this image in color this is your this is your dark horse presents cover yeah. i'm surprised the eight is here because that was usually like the splash page would have the eight mm -hmm. but i don't think that was i mean I, I know there's a cover of this yeah so i don't know if that double dutied or not <laughs> maybe it, maybe it worked double it's always so good man. Yeah. We're like the, it ends with him just having the gay old time fucking chasing the dude yeah. down like laughing 
maniacal laughter, by the way. That's full-on Joker laughing. I see a lot of Darrow. Oh, totally. Yeah, like, I don't know the time period of this exactly, but wow, that could almost be Nixon. Yeah. Nixon, the comic book character, not the president. <laughs> right. This stuff was always sick as fuck, man, where you get your initial whites, and then you hold, put, like, a piece of paper down and, and put, like, another couple lines to just give you that hard surface. That to... does not look like an original, right? Is that a photocopy? I know yeah, it's maybe. not noted here, but I think yeah, that's, a, that's a, a reproduction. Because you can see, like, even the, the yellow of the paper is so busted up on the right. on the scan. Same here, you know. That, I think that's a... Uh, Photo set or put something. In later. Look at that for a, a pretty wild choice. Yeah, yeah, it takes me a minute. Like, and your lettering pasted on. I mean, that might be a second or third go at that page. Yeah. Look at how it feels like it's glowing in the actual scan as opposed to the printed image because if you remember it's very abstract in the final printed stage like it's you you don't see much like there's, there's a lot more white on the printed page than we get to see here yeah this makes me want to bust out the actual printed page and compare them yeah check it out like see we can really make out more pretty well here but it, he really it makes me wonder if like when you're drawing this mm -hmm. like miller like, you're responding to what you see here, right? Like, okay, let's do a little bit more. Like, let's really bounce this water off of this this rod because it has that glow effect, but it's all gone in the print. Yeah. That's, that's uh, yeah, it's cool to see those two next to each other. Yeah, this piece, too. And, you, and see, like, how you see, it looks like a dry brush kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess there is some of that there. But a lot of that is just, it's chaos what's what's white and what's black when it comes to the final printed page like see there's a taper to the, it's raindrops very clear but it's it's pretty well white right there shooting statues <laughs> he's ahead of his time jebediah springfield the proto old town girls yeah wonder woman in the mix there there's like two wonder womans man because there's that one barmaid lady how about that he wow. has the eye in there, kind of abstract, got the shadow of the hair. And and by the way, if he le would have left it, you would have been totally satisfied. Yeah, absolutely. It looks right, but he's going even further into abstraction. This is a neat, check out this. Continuation of our spiral yeah. but continues through his shoulder. Like, clearly that tangent is a planned one. Yeah. And that he, feels like a reference to something like a vertigo. Totally vertigo. Yeah, even him spinning back. To great two-page sequence. And uh, a lot more of your blacked out. But man, the hair does everything. It really Especially does. with a cigarette. What else do you need? And so with this, he's using white as opposed to... Like, I always wondered, like, is it black that you're using uh, or white? And for the most part, it's 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 uh, white. You know, maybe that is uh, just the black ink. But. That feels like an effect he tried at some point in this book. And was like, oh yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it, it captures form really well. And you know what that is? Like, like you know those tight dresses, kind of a velvety texture. Like I've seen them out in the world for sure. I would marvel at this stuff where you you have motion. I think the motion is clear there. Yeah. And yet, why? <laughs> How does it work? It's all in sync. You got the hair bouncing. You got the face going over there. Having that straight arm is yeah. important, that straightness. Dude, is he using tape to and create like the tape. bandage? Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, that's... Uh, that feels like a Sienkiewicz stroke, something he learned from Bill. I think that's a great hair, and I feel yeah. like that grows out of some of the white that sure. we have seen used elsewhere. But again, like you're trying to make all these hairstyles unique, right? You want everything to be stand on its own. Right. Another one of these great pieces where... You know, it looks totally satisfactory as uh, if he would have kept that black in there. But he chose to take it out for this to be the final printed piece. But, like, that looks good. Yes. Interesting decisions. Keep this handy in case we need it again. <laughs> <laughs> Abstract butt cheeks. That's a cover. That's a nice low shot. Mirror, we often mirror. talk about the over the shoulder three quarters is tough. The yeah. behind the behind the face um, works really great there. Man, how many ways can we stretch our bricks? Right now we got the big tiles. Used that a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, this really does feel like that Eisnerian 
you know, proscenium arch, uh, set up your stage play, set up your background to give you just enough. Like, what is this? Like, it's like a little private place to, to put some clothes on. Is that what this little circle gimmick is? I think that's a shower. Oh yeah, that's a shower head up there. I've never seen a shower that looks like that. No, that's probably some New York shit when you Small. have like economy of space. He's doing some, you know, like Scott McCloud. Tell us what this, what's the relationship here right. between these two panels? Yeah, on that like grid, that would be like the far like abstract thing. Yeah, but you know, like whenever I go over here, then it almost feels like this car is used in a similar way. Right. Where they just become these graphic elements on the pages. I love that stuff because it feels like you're trying something. Yeah. You get to do this. You know, even a panel like this Screech, you only get to do that if you're really the person doing everything. Right. Because I don't know how you think about it otherwise. It'd be weird to explain to somebody. The more blue balls <laughs> sequence, man. Let's see how this looks. I don't, I don't quite remember these marks here. But he, he's I love his there, giant feet hanging over the guy. Like even that's a moment of expression of who this character is. Super horny. Never fitting in the world anywhere. Looks good here. It looks totally appropriate. Yeah. But the couch is such a great piece of it like. Is. How do we show Marv always out of his out of his way? Love the inclusion of stuff like that saw. Yeah. Because who thinks of that as some insidious weapon? Right. But it looks it looks wrong. Like the little jagged edges. It's gonna hurt. Yes. And I don't know, like, like how many? I had a bunch of these as a kid that came with like weird little. They come with miter boxes and stuff. Something. Yeah. I still have a couple of those saws. One of my favorite pages, showing the tools of the trade. Yeah, I always like those gloves and the razor wire. Right. He he describes razor wire as just the nastiest thing in this book. That was the first time I came in contact with razor wire. I only grew up with barbed wire. Yeah. And he sells it, man. Like, look at those gloves that he's wearing in order to deal with this stuff. Really sell. Yeah, it, that's a great use of sell. You know, like having the gloves be that much attention on the gloves to show, like, this stuff will cut you to the bone. Right. Setting his traps. Look at how nimble our young Kevin is. Yeah, that's your comic book superhero. That's your Daredevil background. They, they capture that uh, pretty well in the flick also. Man, this really is like a death match, like a, uh, you know, wrestling death match. Like that idea of we're going to handcuff together and then we're going to fight. Right. You're not going to be too fast then. And he's got uh, like some claws and shit. Yeah, he draws him with those claws like like the lead up to this fight every time you'd see him like jumping with a dark background it was it looked like he had a weapon in his hands we were reading another comic uh in prep for this we had to call an audible uh but like the character was talking about his like diamond manicure in 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 those two issues that we were reading and i'm like what the fuck is that like was that a thing because there is a lot of realistic stuff throughout the book but like what is a diamond manic like how do you like create little diamond claws for yourself was that a thing yeah it's not something i'm familiar with but obviously having some kind of claw extension i mean i used to see that in ninja magazines sure but it was just fingernails <laughs> yeah like lee press on nails but they're diamond tipped or he something. uses them too in that in that comic in question don't introduce them if you don't use them and here's a frame sequence like we saw the characters like that one uh a uh, guy with the face paint before, and then he, he, Frank decided to white it out. But now he's going with that inverted silhouette. Yeah, and you get it with the entire page. Yeah. It's cool. It's another one of those themes. There's a it, Mirage, like, Turtles miniseries that came out in the aughts around the time of... Uh, I remember the, the, this. Where it was just shadow yes. Turtles comics. Just pure silhouette. Every panel, mm -hmm. silhouettes, like this. I might have been an Andy Coon joint. I can't remember, but I do remember that comic coming out, and it was kind of neat for that. I you think know, it was a series. Silhouettes. Yeah, like four or four, six issues, something like that. <laughs> Dude, and you get to see, we get a big build up on that saw a couple yeah. pages ago. <laughs> That's quite the payoff. <laughs> tourniquets to make sure he doesn't bleed. Like, Frank thought this out. Yeah, this is dark material. Frank thought out this torture a little bit. This is one of those pieces that uh, fills. Uh, bleeding edge. You know, it feels like he, he moved past this. 
It's an amazing page. That giant, he never screams. Right. In a weird way, it's restrained, but also that restraint is what makes it horrific. And and his body looks good there, like uh, like it's been through stuff. Yeah. You know, those dark splotches look like they could be all kinds of injuries and scars. That little compound. You know, bad shit is happening in there, dude. And Marv's gonna find out blending in with the background a bit. I think that's intentional. These flak jackets he constructed for his guys are real sweet. They're one of those elements that work well in this black and white style. I think that's a piece of making something like this work is figuring out like what works, you know, like like these kinds of uh, the the clay tile for the roof shingles. It might have been perfectly apt for the world, but also lends itself to the black and white. Super visual, yeah. And everybody tried to do these after that, and once you go a little off a skew, then the next layer is going to give like people fuck this. I fucked this up a million times, oh, man. Yeah. He even, you know, I, I feel like he even messes it up sure. here and there, but it just works. And like, that to, texture just sells. In Dame to Kill for, he really perfected it. Great at like the framing sequences too. You know, like having that yeah. bell tower is yeah. what you're looking through. You mentioned Eisner as like stage setup, but also the compositions. Like think of all the moments of Eisner looking through a window, looking through an alley. It's here, man. It's that's a part of these what Miller's doing here. They need to drop a full bomb on the whole Rourke family because, like, <laughs> there's Kevin, and he's not surprised. And then there's the the yellow bastard as part of the family, and like, what are we doing here, man? Yeah, your whole family sucks. You gotta go. Yeah, they're they're infected with something. It's so disturbing. It really is. It's a great body type, but it is a. Yeah. And it's a lit room, and it's providing some challenges for Frank Miller. Like he's he's giving you that line because it's just it's too abstract if you don't have it. And he's making that determination. And whenever he draws that line, I have to imagine that he's saying like, okay, like it's too too far from like it'll take the reader too long to understand what they're looking at. Yeah, I appreciated that line. You know, whenever I was reading this as a kid, that that line made sense to me. Whenever you would use it. Uh, but I do see it as, uh, you know, I see what you're describing there. It's similar in a way to uh, earlier, I was like, black on black, whenever we saw Kevin in the dark. You just got to figure out ways to sell, you know, s you, it's a very limited tool set that you get to work with. That's a great reverse silhouette, that yeah. whole panel. You see him building the figure. You see the eye sockets and where the eye is situated in here. This makes me think of that great Spider-Man annual with Dr. Octopus, where... Mm -hmm. Miller is sending Dr. Octopus through the printing press of yeah. the newspaper factory. And imagine how hard that would be. You read that in a script and now you got to draw that. And he chose to go abstract because fuck, that's a hard thing to draw. And if you drew everything, maybe it wouldn't look clear. It's almost got to be iconography. Uh, a, a hospital bit, like this is all you need, man. The tubes fill the right sort of thickness to you know pass some liquids through. You got the nose joint. You got the little bed guard rail. It's it's all there. Yeah, I've said it enough that it's it's probably you could do a drinking game of economy. But I feel that way about this panel too, where you yeah. know it's it's a nightmare image, right? Like you're you're being operated on against your will, and this is what you're seeing. That's pretty great stuff. I feel like that's the kind of shot that we've seen in a lot of media. And uh, man, if you've ever been in an operation, right? So pretty pretty good uh, horror shot there without drawing a lot. Getting a little conjugal visit. You you wonder, like, with all the stuff that the work family puts them through and all the strings they could pull, why they let them get a little puss? You know, maybe just deprive them of that also. Or maybe it's like, you're getting a little bit, that's the last bit. Yeah, once he gets into the system, maybe they just couldn't stop that. Right. Without, you know, killing her or something like that. <laughs> this is this is great stuff, too. You know, the the economy part... Like, when I do layouts, I think that sometimes of, like, it's a simpler... What you're doing is simpler here. Yeah. But that's the, that's the reading it, part. Exactly. Sometimes the simpler, that first idea is the best one for clarity. Absolutely. And clarity is paramount, man. I mean, are we making comics or are we drawing books where you get to stare at pretty pictures all day? Ideally, you do both. You do. And I think these skulls are examples of that. I find these skulls gorgeous. But you read them in a quarter of a second. Yeah. They're so clear. But I think they look amazing. I don't feel like I ever noticed like these little kind of yeah, I didn't either bits, little steams or something. 
it's almost a matter of like figuring out how you find the beautiful stuff you right. know in a simple style like this and something that's readable it's that you so don't cool. want to just stare at pretty pictures it's like the charge going but through. you do want the pretty pictures in there so do. how do you get them yeah those curlies i like and i, I never would have noticed that before a little finger painting from uncle frank man like let's let's make a xerox of that and put it on his iphone that's a great example of how much does not translate yeah you know so much of that that nuance is gone you know like there's just no indication of some of those ones that are half half the ink left on your finger and then it just becomes a full blotch mm -hmm. with no value to it looks good you know you can live with it but we're just saying that there is a lot of Might contrast better actually here in terms of like your burnt flesh right you know it feels burnt out i think a little bit more last page small paper Oh, here's a lot of covers. The answers all yeah. the questions. There's the cover that you were asking about. There's the one that I remember buying as uh, early on. Yeah. Boy, that was a hell of a run of Dark Horse Presents because if you're looking, you can see uh, Martha's in the top sure. corner of like, I think the first appearance was like the big fifth anniversary edition. And then you see John Byrne's Next Men starts out in uh, Dark Horse Presents at this time. And then you're like mid Carters and stuff. Bacchus by Eddie Campbell. That ain't nothing to sneeze at. No, not at all. Is there Mobius in here? It's possible. It, it, I mean, it's a very rich time period. Like Dark Horse, Miller signing is like the Reggie White signing in Green Bay. Like right. it changed the, the the direction, I think, of Dark Horse. Like it really became a place where A-listers could show up. Some promo materials. That's a pretty iconic one. I saw that one a lot. This is that image where like you saw that most people you see this before you see the comic so it's like you can't wait to read right the marv versus none sequence <laughs> yeah. that yeah. just got just ain't there man it's just that evocative image some more of uh uncle frank's catholicism showing mm. that's a pretty great image and this might have been just like the little um yeah the dark horse presents cover yeah, i think a few of these are covers that feels pretty rough like that's that's some something new Love the chunkiness of this guy. Just a box of a human. Never seen this piece before. Yeah, that's a subsequent printing, I guess. Yeah, it said third printing. And then, of course, old Sparky. That chair looks so heavy. It the, does. The blockiness. Like, it's, it's, it's telephone weight. poles. Yeah, it feels like what you would need to hold down what's going to happen. How about this? Preserved his pencils, man. He's using a new style. So maybe you don't want to fuck up the original art board. Maybe you need this to like run off another scan or light box or something. That's cool to see the pencils with the lettering penciled in. Yeah. It's tight. Never saw this image before. Who's that? Andy Kubert. Huh. Ink by Jansen. Wow. I wonder what that was for. Maybe just for this. Another great end page. Not bad. Not bad. Good stuff. There it is. Yeah, I was staring at this thinking about, like, what are those pen lines? You know, this is the most blown up we get to see, like, the, uh, you know, some of the outline pen lines. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so close to look like the word balloons. That's the same as the pen. liquid. Yeah. And it looks That's really similar to this, so Yeah, but and, and and but like you see these like little doodads, man. Those are the things that maybe question is it the pen and then you're like ticking back. Like it's the same pen and you're kinda doing almost like a check. It's hard to tell because this is a different mark. That's a different thing. And I don't know if that's a pen nib or if that's a fine fine brush. Yeah. I don't know. Very nice artist edition though. Frank, Very come well on. Done. We'll do the shoot interview and uh, answer all those questions. Is that a kitchen sink logo? What the heck's kitchen sink's involvement? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, maybe maybe they own a bunch of the pages or you know, somebody owns a bunch of the pages, something like that. Good question. Maybe maybe for a time uh Dennis Kitchen was doing some of that liaison work, man, before. I know he does stuff at Dark Horse. And but he's got he's he's like the executor of certain dudes' estates, Eisner, um Kurtzman. Kurtzman. So maybe for ten minutes he was helping Frank out with some stuff. Yeah, I guess so. Good book. Heck of a book. Love that it's oversized. Love that some of those pages are bigger than one and a half off. Absolutely, man. It's funny. This is one of the artist editions that I look at and think about buying and haven't bought. 
that I've probably looked at the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, when I heard this thing was coming out, I just had to grab it. Like, I, I just, we, you can never take for granted that you'll ever have another chance with some of that stuff, man. So had to scoop it up. And the truth is, man, the King Kayfabers are grabbing whatever copies are left online because they are watching us stream this video in real time on the Patreon. And if they're not, sitting here in real time they're at the office or something they're getting the video before anybody else is so support the patreon uh it mitigates the kayfabe effect and will prevent uh you having to buy inflated comics uh at inflated prices in the future man uh the videos are brought to you by the books that we make so jimmy tell the people some of your bibliography hulk grand design and street angel princess of poverty pre-order those today they'll be out in the coming months and uh, maybe in the coming weeks Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Alive, and The Plain Janes, also available and in print now. You can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can see more of my art. You can download out of print zines and mini comics. You can see what I'm working on next. And an example of some of those downloads, I just posted some blue line templates. So if you're a fellow maker, pop on there and download those. Those are actually free to the public, so you can just pick those up now. Red Room Crypto Killers issue number one is being solicited by your comic shop. Uh, so put in your orders, put in your pre-orders ASAP. We need to know how many of these things to print. There are two trade paperbacks out there right now. Red Room Trigger Warnings, Red Room the Anti-Social Network. Uh, those are in your local comic shops. I'm serializing all the Red Room stuff before it hits paper at my Patreon. Go there. Link tree in the description below. 10-year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree. Three volumes of X-Men Grand Design out in the universe. And uh, WYSIWYG is a comic that I have out there that you might be able to get your hands on. Uh, Jimmy, tell the people what else we have uh, out in the wild. Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts, mugs, hats, stickers, and lots more merchandise at our spread shop. That link is also below this video. Great ways to support the channel and keep these videos rocking. Given those marching orders, Jimmy, we'll be on our way. Make more comics.